Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I wanted to come and run this trap for a second. Um, girl, I got some things that I want to discuss. Um, and then for real, for real, I'm going to get off of here and watch uh, P-Valley. And I'm going to try to knock out Love and Marriage DC. Um, yeah. So anyways, let's go ahead and talk about The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, this is the first um, after show for The Real Housewives of Atlanta this season. All right. Um, so basically, you know, so I, I'm back and forth about the, uh, about the after show because I feel as though... It's kind of like, what's the point of the reunion? I mean, we're still going to watch, but it's like, what's the point of the reunion if they're already kind of like talking about the episodes or the scenes, you know, um, as, as the, you know, season progresses. So whatever, girl. Um, but clearly I don't, I don't have too much of a problem because I'm down here talking about it, right? So, all right. So I, th I thought everybody looked nice. Um, I thought Candy looked amazing. I loved her dress and her shoes. Kenya looked absolutely amazing. Drew looked nice. Um, Marlo, everyone looked nice. Sheree, um, Marlo, uh, Sonya. The pairing was basically Kenya and Sheree. They were together. Excuse me, sorry. Marlo and Sonya, Sonya, and then Drew and Candy. I don't know. I felt like maybe Candy and Sonya should have been together. And, oh, they probably they put the, the they put the two new girls together. Well, Peach Holders. Okay, so they put Sonya and Marlo probably because they're the two new girls, and then Drew and Candy. They have more. You know, Drew was here last year. Okay, girl, whatever. Um. They discussed Drew's <laughs> the mommy makeover. Girl, I think that a lot of us have come to the the the, the conclusion or the agreement. Um, <laughs> we're in agreement that, you know, and it's not to body shame, Drew. Um, I'm going to watch what I say just because, you know, I feel like when other women say certain things about other women, I feel like even though it could be wrong, it doesn't sound as like, when it's coming from a man. So I'm not going to go like, you know, but I will say that Drew, um, it does not look like Drew had a mommy makeover. It doesn't. I don't think anything is wrong with Drew's body, but it doesn't look like some, it doesn't look like the body of someone who went under the knife. And, you know, I'll even say this, like, if you go under the knife, I think the whole purpose is to come out looking like, <laughs> girl, Better. <laughs> I don't know no, no other way to put it, right? Um, <laughs> um, Kenya talks about Marlo, and she basically calls Marlo a bully. Um, I said Marlo is a mess. Um, she says that you know you get a little bit angry. Marlo, Marlo does this a lot. Like I don't think Marlo really knows how to be a friend outside of someone who's not Nene Leakes. Because even when Marlo gets upset with her friends, listen, we've all gotten upset with our friends. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it happens. Just because you're friends does not mean that you don't get upset with, you know, with each other. But Marlo doesn't know how to talk to her friends when she's upset. Even if it's an argument like Candy and Kenya, they don't start attacking each other's husbands and bodies and you know what I'm saying? Marlo goes there, but then she'll sit here and say, you know, like Candy, me and Candy should be closer. Girl, look at the stuff that you've said about Candy this season. And even if we go to back to seasons past, you... I can say that when it comes to Candy and Marlo, I don't remember Marlo really being like the person that, and you know, Candy has this thing where like, she's just like nice, nasty kind of like, girl, I'm a go along to get along type of girl, right? Girl, okay, girl. I really don't fool with you like that at the end of the day, but girl, I don't, I don't want to argue back and forth. So girl, 
it is what it is, right? One thing that people pointed out that I'm starting to realize about Candy is that Candy is spoiled. Kenya said that it makes sense now. And Candy, when Candy doesn't get her way, when someone calls out Candy, she gets very upset. I, I could see what Marlo says that Candy is probably used to people kissing her tail. I could see it. I could see it. I don't know why it took me 14 seasons. Well, how long she been on? 13 seasons since she got on? I don't know why it took me so long to realize that, but I realize that now. You know, sometimes I'm late to the party. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, Marlo... When it comes to like, like girl, and I, I said this like the second episode, whatever direction Kenya and Marlo's relationship goes, if it goes into the, if it goes left, it's Marlo's fault because Kenya really hasn't, Kenya really hasn't done anything to Marlo this season. Yes, she, you know, was shady about the whole law archive, whatever Marlo's business is called, and she made those comments at the party. But girl, Kenya didn't say anything less or more than what the other girl said. Um, Marlo just wants an issue with Kenya. Um, Marlo says that Kenya knows how to poke, 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 poke. Marlo has a very warped sense of reality. Marlo, give me an example this season where Kenya has just been poke, 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 poking at you. Um... Kenya says that Marlo behaves like her husband um, used to behave. Basically, try and pretend that they care, but they will try and destroy you with their words. <laughs> she compared Marlo to Mark. <laughs> um, Kenya said, when she walked up on me, I don't do that anymore. AKA, honey, the last heifer who walked up on me, girl, pulled me to the ground. Another bitch ain't putting her hands on me. <laughs> Not no more. <laughs> That's what I got from it. <laughs> so Marlo, you go ahead and walk up if you want to. Even though we're too old to be fighting. <laughs> okay? Ain't no other woman putting ain't nobody else putting their hands on me. <laughs> that was a one and done. Okay? Um the vibe the vibrating panties. I'm so sick of I, I thought that, you know, I, I, I this is what I thought. I thought that because these scenes are, you know, the the show was filmed months ago that Candy probably would have had a change of heart months later, but it sounds like Candy is still on the same shit. Candy, you are too old at your big ass age to be walking around here thinking that it is okay, right? For another man to have access to another woman's vagina and she doesn't want it to happen, <laughs> right? That's what, is that like, Girl. And then Candy starts to try to compare all of these things that that are just, I mean, I don't, that are just dumb. I'm sorry. And we know Candy is not dumb. But in this, she sounds dumb to me. I'm so sorry to say it. Girl. Candy, you you here go Drew. Girl, she busting it wide open. You know when Ken, when they had the girls trip and Ken, Kenya had her legs wide open. It was a girl's, well, it was a girl's trip. Right? Girl, I say girls. <laughs> it was a girl's trip. Everybody was having fun at in that moment, right? What there were no husbands around vibrate having access to everybody's vagina through vibrating panties. She said they pick and choose when it's okay to be to be wild, but when I do it, it's a problem. <sighs> And this is the other thing that frustrated the shit out of me with Candy on this after show was that Kenya, and I mentioned this, girl, Kenya mentioned how she went through the shit that she went through with Apollo, right? Yes, I know people are going to say Kenya flirted with Apollo. Yes, Kenya flirted with Apollo, but we also know it was made bigger, it was made into a bigger issue because of Kenya's physical. Because when Nene flirted with when Nene flirted with a Peter, didn't nobody say nothing, and that's no tea, no shade. But girl, that's just what it is. So yes, Kenya did flirt with Apollo, but it was taken to a completely different level because this two-time convicted felon and his wife, who take dope money from the D boys in a parking lot, decided to get on TV and push this lie about Kenya offering uh, Apollo fellatio in L.A. <laughs> Apollo comes back 
and says that he made it up, he lied, right? The thing that got under my skin is King has said this in the after show. Then, boof, we go to the next scene. Candy says, yes, I understand that Kenya went through what she went through. I don't want to say the people's names, but she went through what she went through years ago. So you can understand that. And I even said in my review, Kenya already went through this shit with people pretty much calling her a bona fide hoe. Why would you then put her in this situation, right, with a new group of married men? So now the people can say, oh, she's a hoe. She's a hoe. You know, she's a hoe. <laughs> you know? So Candy realizes this, but Candy still feels like it's not that big of a deal because, girl, you were in twa. You was busting your legs wide open at the girl's trip. You said you wanted to sleep with me in front of my husband. Girl, like, it's layers to this shit. Like, being a freak ain't just on one level. You know what I'm saying? Doing freaky shit is just not on one level. Having fun is just not one level. It's layers. You cannot compare a girl's trip. You cannot compare me saying, oh, yeah, I will sleep with you. I think you're hot. To, oh, girl, your husband having a remote control that can access my goddamn panties. After you already know, girl, what I went through a couple of years ago. Candy is out of pocket. <laughs> Anyways, um, they talk about drop it with Drew. Drew says that she told them that she was an ambassador. <laughs> Drew be lying. I'm sorry. Drew comes across as a scam artist. Everything is, I thought I told you. You know, I'm not good at math. Um, girl, <laughs> when Kenya, Kenya basically said that maybe the people wanted to use Drew as an example of someone who doesn't work out to show them that the program actually works. And then Sheree said, but girl, look at the end. Look, look at how she looked at the end. Why would you want to use that as an example? <laughs> when the TV charade is on, is on Drew's ass. I mean, charade is a workout person. People who work out, like, I'm sorry, like, when they, that's what I'm saying, that's, that was part of Sonya's reasoning that she started questioning Drew. So, Sonya is this athlete, Right? And I'm look, sitting here, you talking about dropping with Drew, and girl, you can't even drop it. You can't even do a squat. Girl, what are we... Girl, you... Um, Marlo feels like her and Candy should be closer. Girl, anyways, I think Marlo had... I think Marlo is very much detached from reality. Um, Marlo, what she says... Like I said, I, I'm not mad at Marlo for, you know, making Candy work this season. I'm not. You know, I think it's kind of funny. You know, I can't wait till Marlo, and, I, mean, I can't wait till Candy and Kenya get into her ass at the reunion. But I think it's funny. It doesn't really bother me like it's bothering some people. You know, some people want Marlo fired, kicked off the show because they felt as though, you know, she's slut shaming. And like I said in my review, girl, I think it's comical that the same people who, you know, you know, want to start a petition to get Marlo off of the show for slut shaming, girl, you want Phaedra and Portia back after they accuse Candy and Todd of hello. I think that's the weirdest shit I have ever heard in my life. You want Marlo gone for slut shaming, but you want Phaedra and Portia back after they accuse Candy and Todd of that don't even that don't even fucking go. <laughs> You're like <laughs> But Marlo still, you know, even though Marlo is doing a lot this season, um it doesn't bother me that she's coming for Candy. I just wish that her coming for Candy and Kenya, it just made sense. Because Marlo is all over the fucking place. It's like, it's almost like watching my niece just run around the house. It's like, girl, you can't keep up because it's like, girl, we're, like, like, okay, girl, okay, what's going on? <sighs> oh, why don't we fall, fall in love? Why don't Baby, 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 baby. 
So, you know, I didn't want to go too deep into this, you know. But Sonny Hostin. Y'all know I love Sonny. You know, Sonny get on my nerves sometimes. I mean, girl, everybody get on my nerves. Girl, I'm sure I get on y'all nerves too. Everybody get on everybody's nerves. But I love Sonny Hostin to pieces, girl. I think she is so smart. Um, but Sonny, basically, you know, you know, Sonny said a lot. Uh, <laughs> this is what it comes down to. So Sonny basically was saying that, you know, she's Catholic and, you know, she doesn't believe in the A word at all under any circumstance, even if it's incest. <sighs> now, I'm going to say so. I'm going to finish. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about the rest of what she said. I don't like mean this. I don't really like want to sound like I'm being disrespectful, but I think sometimes people get so caught up into like their faith and their religion. Like, so what Sonny is basically saying is that if my daughter was unfortunately violated, right? If something happened to her, like just on some, just the most traumatic thing that could probably happen, right? Y'all get what I'm trying to say. I would still convince her or she's not basically she's going to have that baby. That shit is weird as fuck to me. Because of your religion. So if something happened to your child you would force her to have a baby because of your religion. I'm sorry that shit is, that shit is crazy. That shit is crazy to me. However, just like she said, that's how she, that's her faith. And that's what she believes in. She can't impose that on everybody else. So this is just how I feel. She doesn't think that it's right that they have now taken the choice away from people, right? And that's just how, that's, and that's what it comes down to. You can feel how you feel. Like, I can feel how I feel about certain stuff. But that does not mean that I should be able to impose my views where I should not be able to, I should not, what I believe in, I should not make that the, the end all, the be all, the end all, the, the, this is where the period, this is where it stops, this is where it ends, and that's what it is. Right. Especially it's one thing if we're getting into a debate about something silly and I'm trying to get you to change your mind. But girl, something that could affect your life. Why is it what I say trumps trumps your life? It, 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 it doesn't go. So she's basically saying, you know, I believe in what I believe in. But girl, at the end of the day, girl, I, I can't force what I believe in on you. So even if you want to go and do whatever you need to do to handle your business, Girl, that's you. And I think that's how it should be. You can believe in what you want to believe in. But girl, when it, when, it, when it comes to taking away someone else's rights because of what you believe in, that's when we start to have a problem. <sighs> Shout out to Sonny. Girl, but girl, uh-uh, girl. Um... What did Summer Walker have on at the BET Awards? She looked a fool. I'm sorry. <laughs> why don't we, why don't we? Kelly Clarkson's ex-husband purchases 1.8 million home months after being awarded $115 a month in spousal support. Girl. You know, I, I know some of you, uh, for, the, for the people that don't know, I do know that sometimes I may contradict myself. I mean, girl, we all do it. You know, sometimes I do have double standards and I'll say it. You know, one of the one, one of the things that I don't believe in, I hate when I hear about a man taking a woman's money. That bothers me. It does. It does. And y'all know I'll be the first ones on here talking about, bitch, you better get your money from that nigga when y'all divorce. <laughs> girl. But when it comes to like a man taking a woman's money, I just look at you like you a bomb. Like, oh, you a bum. That's why I had so much respect for Peter when him and when her, when him, when her, when uh, him and uh, Cynthia got a divorce. He didn't try to take Cynthia's money. 
He left the marriage. I had so much respect for Peter for that. They say, they say that he's worth $10 million. His net worth is worth $10 million. Girl, I can't tell her what he over there begging for her money. Girl, he's so trifling. Girl, Brandon Blackstock, the ex-husband of Kelly Clarkson. Y'all better start getting prenups. Girl, I know y'all, I know, I know they have fed y'all the Disney princess girl fairy tale story, honey. I'm here to tell y'all the shit ain't true. I know y'all want to believe it. Girl, it's, it's a scam that Ty set up to come back to you with the bullshit. Girl, it's a scam. Girl, it's a scam. Protect your money. When we can talk about, I can say what I, well, I can say what I want to say about Candy, but out of every bitch I know, honey, Candy about the smartest when it comes to her goddamn money. I don't even know Candy, but girl, Candy didn't play when it came to her money and Todd. Okay, Candy says it's gonna be one big ass party if you don't sign that prenup. Cause you're not getting, we're not getting, you're not girl, no ma'am. I could love you. I could love you till the sun come up. But girl, when they got to do with this money, <laughs> that's a whole nother situation. Okay. Um, it says Brandon is uh, about to be living in a be living a city boy summer after reportedly spending a whopping one point eight million dollar on his new home in Montana. If you've been following the, the, the divorce drama between the ex-couple, in March, a judge ordered Brandon to move out of the Montana ranch he formerly shared with the American Idol winner after he claimed he couldn't afford to buy his own house, which is why he was still living in her property. See, that's what I'm saying. You can't believe everything you read on the internet because if he has a net worth, which I know that includes assets and all that stuff, but if he has a net worth of 10 million, girl, he should be afford to buy, he should be, he should be able to afford to buy his own home. He ain't have no money. I'm sorry. Because yeah. if you can't afford to buy your own home, or even he was lying about the money that he brought in, girl, he wasn't lying. Girl, Kelly was over there taking her that man. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what y'all doing in 2022 from what y'all told me, girl. Y'all told me y'all retiring y'all husbands. That's what y'all told me, girl. I'm not trying to do this. <laughs> I'm not, oh shit. But girl, y'all told me y'all was out here retiring y'all husbands. Even some of y'all told me, girl, y'all didn't mind retiring y'all husbands. I said, well, go ahead, head of household. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with you being a, the leader and the head of household of your address. Nothing wrong with it. I just didn't know y'all was out here retiring husbands and taking care of y'all men. <laughs> yeah, I did. I knew y'all was taking care of y'all men. I didn't know y'all was retiring them, though. But let me shut up. I'm bringing up old shit. Um, the same month, the ex, uh, the ex has reached a divorce settlement with a judge ruling that Kelly would have to pay a one off sum of 1.3 million on top of the 115,000 per month in spousal support and $45,000 per month in child support for their two children, River Rose and Remington Alexander. <laughs> now it seems Brandon is clearly reaping the benefits, having splashed almost 2 million on his new home which boasts four bedrooms, uh, two and a half bathrooms. Girl, he must got a lot of land. He must have, he, that has to be, he, he must, he has to have a lot of land. Did they say a ranch? He has to have a lot of land. Because four bedrooms and two bathrooms for 1.8. He also reported Brandon, who previously, excuse me, who previously made most of his earnings from his career as a music manager, is now looking to shift his attention elsewhere. Uh, with sources saying he wants to quit Hollywood and work on cattle ranching. Girl, so he's a bum. Kelly, uh, you had a kid by a bum. You had two kids by a bum, honey. Mm -mm. It's the bums for me. Did y'all see Kanye at the uh, BET Awards looking like a fool? Kanye, it is a, I know it was this, a girl. What was the weather yesterday in um, Los Angeles? Somebody tell me. Was, was the BET Awards in Los Angeles yesterday? I know it had to be hot. Kanye was outside with a whole big ass extra, extra large jacket on. Girl, some gloves, his face covered up, couldn't breathe, a hat. Girl, Kanye, you look the fool. So sick of y'all. I want to talk about what this girl said about her parents, about parents. Um, it was a clip I saw in the neighborhood talk that I want to dive into. Um, we've had these conversations before. 
I stand on the shit that I say sometimes. Sometimes I come back when I think I'm wrong after I thought about it. I go, yeah, y'all was right. I was wrong. Um, but this, when it comes to this kid stuff, you know, one of the things that, bo- that, that not necessarily bothers me, but I just like roll my eyes, is the first thing that people say is, you know, oh, you ain't got no kids. Like, I don't have to have kids in order to know what it feels like to be a kid. Like, girl, I experienced it. Girl, 100%. Girl, 100%. So you can't tell me shit about how a child feels or what a child goes through because I went through it. But we'll talk about that later. All right, y'all, let me watch P-Valley and then I'll be back later. All right, bye.